ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. It's Francis Lee for NYY News. I want to say, uh, please excuse my voice from the outset. Easter is a really busy time for me. And uh, yeah, so my voice is uh, pretty much shot. But I'm trying to get through this video because this is more or less like the frequency which I'm trying to like talk to you guys like in between series. That's no more what I was doing before for your uh, Simonetti's page. Uh, some of you guys remember. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. Uh, for NYY News and just try to keep that consistency, man. We got to work through even all the struggles, right? Uh, again, you already know, got the smacking, cracking shirt on. You guys know where to get the merch. Uh, you got to hit up the nyynews.com page, you know, check it out. It's, it's a lot of good stuff. It's just, there's a lot of good stuff. So, I mean, you're missing out. This is one of my favorite uh, shirts, though. I think I like this one even better than the DJ one. But let's jump right in. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you guys saw my prediction on the Blue Jay series, uh, how I thought things were going to go. Things did not go <laughs> exactly as I had hoped. Uh, the Yankees ended up dropping two out of the three of those games. Uh, but there was a lot of good uh, mixed in with the putrid. <laughs> uh, Cole looked just as dominant as we expected him to look. Uh, yes, he gave up two runs. Uh, the one run there early on in, in the early innings that they the Blue Jays, the Blue Jays put together a uh, you know, a run of a couple hits and they manufactured a run, but he limits the damage in that inning and he's able to get out of it just giving up the one run. And then later in the game, uh, he gives up that, that uh, you know, he leaves a slider over the heart of the plate to Teoscar Hernandez, I want to say. And I mean, that that's, uh, you know, that's a oopsie. That's a, that's a mistake. And um, yeah, we can, we can look at that and Cole can definitely grow from there. But we know that Cole does struggle with the home runs. Every 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 ace actually does have their struggles. I, I don't I don't know why we even have to go through this, but um, Cole looked great, just as dominant as as we expected. And like he said at the end of that performance, if he could if he could just have that one slider back, it's it's that much more of a gem. The Yankees might even win that game. But of course, the big story was just that the offense was sleeping. Um, the first game of the season, season and opening day, the offense was uh, pretty much asleep, sleepwalking throughout the whole thing. Pretty much, you know, gift wrapping the game to the Blue Jays because they just allowed it to be so close. Um, in all three games in the series, what you're going to notice is that our pitching never really gave up uh, too many runs. And our bullpen was pretty much lights out phenomenal. Um, so it was really just up to our offense to show up. And that was going to be the story, which is why I predicted a 3-0 sweep going into the series. Because I was like, our guys have to show up. I mean, the Blue Jays don't even have Robbie Ray or Nate Pearson. They've got... Ryu, and then after Hinjin Ryu, they don't even know what they're doing. But apparently, these no-name guys were enough, uh, you know, to, you know, at least one of them was enough to silence the Yankee bats, along with Ryu, who did pitch really well. Um, I mean, there was a lot of things in that series. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm moving on to this. Uh, this is a picture of Aaron Hicks just whiffing on a pitch that was uh, low inside. You probably can't see this on the video, but the pitch is on the inside, uh, right outside of the zone, inside corner, bottom. Uh, Aaron Hicks looks terrible at the number three spot. Uh, I don't know how else to put it. Aaron Hicks does not look comfortable in the number three spot. I know he came out uh, before the game uh, today against Baltimore and got some extra work in, but I think he's going to take a lot more than just a, a little bit of extra work for this Aaron Hicks thing to get figured out. I don't know what it is. But uh, he does not look comfortable there. The one thing that Aaron Hicks is going to do wherever he's batting in the lineup is look at pitches. He's going to see a lot of pitches, and he's going to get his walks. And so far, we've seen that. So, I mean, it's not too alarming. But, I mean, so far, he's just not been the number three hitter that we want uh, or that we that we would expect on a championship team. So, I mean, that's, that's a shame. And another story is uh, things like this. Uh, you got Gleyber Torres fielding a ball. And, uh, yeah, he just throws it uh, into t the foul territory there. Uh, Bruce, you know, did his, did his best in a sense. There's another angle where it looks like, yeah, Bruce probably could have caught it. But, I mean, it's a shortstop. And when you're a shortstop, I mean, these throws have to be on point. I mean, I, I don't – I'm not in the camp that kills Gleyber Torres, uh, you know, and whatever. I, I actually really like Gleyber Torres. I like what he brings to the table. I just want him – to put in the work, to take the next step, because he's the shortstop for the New York Yankees. I mean, I'm sorry, it's not to you know discriminate against other people, but it's not the Pittsburgh Pirates we're, we're talking about here. We're, we're not talking about the Miami Marlins. We're you know we're not talking about 
the Texas Rangers, or so we're talking about the New York Yankees, dude. Like you're the short starting shortstop for the New York Yankees. You got to put in the work. I mean, and it seems like he's trying, but with plays like this in a series like this series against the Blue Jays, once you add that to the fact that the offense is sleepwalking, it's just things like this is, are not what you want to see when you're losing games and stuff like that. If this play happens in a game that the Yankees are up 5-1 or 6-zip or something like that, nobody probably even mentions it. But the fact that they go on to lose this game because Herman also showed up and threw a clunker, it's like, yeah, Glaber, you're going to get called out for that. Speaking of Herman, uh, Herman definitely didn't have the first start of the year that I thought he would. I thought he was going to come in like looking how he did in the spring. Um, he did not. I got this picture courtesy of yes, obviously. Um, yeah, so only three innings pitched in his debut. He allowed two home runs. That's only the 14th time he's done that in about 40 career starts. Uh, seven hard hit balls out of 12 in play. That's a little ridiculous. Average exit velocity of 95 plus. That's not going to get it done. Uh, you got to get softer contact than that, especially in Yankee Stadium. And yeah, this was tied for the second shortest start of his career. The worst, obviously, was that one in the third uh, in Boston, September of 2018. It's there. Uh, let's not even talk about that game. That was terrible. Um, but yeah, this this was uh, not what we expected from my man German Sunday. So hopefully he bounces back uh, his next start because this is definitely not what we were looking for um, out of him. I thought he was going to help us bounce back and how and hopefully salvage that series, but it didn't go that way. What was a positive, though, and uh, shout out to our friends over at Talking Yanks for putting this together. Uh, they updated it today after today's game, but we all know it's more of the same. A bright spot was that our six relievers who pitched in the first three games in this series against the Blue Jays pitched to a uh, one, well, pitched to only giving up one earned run, seven hits over 15 and two thirds innings, 14 strikeouts, one walk. I mean, ERA is under one. I think before coming into tonight's game, the year it was a point five three ERA for the bullpen after the series with the Blue Jays. Now, why is this noteworthy? Because the Blue Jays have a formidable lineup. I said this. In my last video, we're not going to be able to just completely overlook the Blue Jays as if they were the Orioles or somebody like that. Their lineup is ridiculously formidable. And I think in our division, they are going to be our rivals this year. I don't I don't think that there's any doubt and there shouldn't be any question about that. Being that Tampa Bay is not going to be what they were last year. But Tampa Bay is also going to be Tampa Bay. So and, and we will see that real soon. I think this weekend, actually. But yeah, this is this was really encouraging. I mean, the one walk in fifteen and two thirds, and, and they they got a lot of like fifteen and two thirds. That's a lot of innings for the first three games of of, of the year, right? Your fifteen and two thir thirds spread over three games. That's about an average of five innings a game. When you're demanding that much from your bullpen this early in the year, these numbers are phenomenal. I mean, the strikeouts, yeah. But I'm, I, what I care mostly about is that one earned run. I mean, that that's great. That's that's exactly what we want. Right and Licky, you know, is one of those guys that came in, and yeah, you know, he's gonna have his growing pains. It's not gonna be spring training, but I think he's gonna be really, really strong for us. And so far, the guys have been good. Most importantly, though, we gotta shout out Mike King. Mike King came in after the clunker that Domingo Herman threw, and just dominated. Was lights out. Six innings pitched, no earned runs, only gave up one hit and walked one. The strikeouts were low, just three strikeouts. But who cares how you're doing it on sixty eight pitches? For six innings, I don't care if you don't strike out anybody. This is phenomenal. This is pitching. This is a pitcher's pitcher performance. Like this, this was amazing. So definitely shout out, shout out to Mike King. I think that uh, he's just getting started. I mean, I think uh, simonetti has been on this guy. I want to say I've been listening to Simonetti talk about him for quite some time now. So I was happy when I saw that because I was like, oh, Pete's gonna get some credit because he's been talking about this guy for a while. Um, so yeah, shout out to Mike King. He definitely looked good. Moving on though. Right, the new series at hand is the Baltimore Orioles. We all know how much the Yankees love when Baltimore comes into town or hopping on the bus to go to Baltimore, right? For the past few years, it's just been a, pl a pleasant series uh, most of the time, um, especially since 2019. So what should we expect for this series? Going in this series, we have Gary Cole. No, first we have uh, Montgomery, then we have Gary Cole, and then we have Jamison Tyone because, again, Tyone wasn't in the first five of the rotation because they, he's going to start the season on some training wheels because of the injury. Um, but, yeah, we got Monty, Cole, 
Tyone. So again, how am I going to pick this in terms of like pitching? Obviously, I'm going to go with my guys the same way I did with Toronto, even though our guys kind of, you know, didn't back them up in terms of like the lineup backing up the pitching. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that the Yankees are going to back up the pitching in this series because the Orioles pitching is just not there. I mean, they do have a guy or two who can probably pitch, you know, well enough to get a victory. But I just feel like our lineup has to show up. They have to wake up. And wake up is what ex is exactly what they did in tonight's first game of the series. Um, so, yeah, I'm picking the Yankees to take all three of these. And I think we I think we should take all three of these the same way I thought we should have with Toronto. We dropped two of those three. After tonight's game, tonight's win, we're at two and two. If we take these next two, then we're at four and two. And I like that. I like that for the first two series of the year. Right? Important to note tonight, Jordan Montgomery, uh, first game of the year against the Orioles. Monty, lights out. Again, I mean, what, just like with the Michael King, like, what can you ask? What more can you ask, right? Six innings pitched, no earned runs, four hits, zero walks, seven calls. You, I know your, your boy Julian from Grunt Talk was going crazy. He had to be going crazy tonight. I mean, this, Monty looked just phenomenal. Phenomenal. And that's exactly how he should look against a lineup like the Orioles, right? I'm not saying, I'm not trying to downgrade what, what he turned in because we saw what he did last year against the Tampa Bay Rays who were formidable, right? Um, and went to the World Series. But this is exactly what I'm expecting, right? For Monty to win the game, come in and win the games you're supposed to win, right? And just put out the performances that we're expecting. That's really all we, that's really all we can ask, right? Now, when it comes down for the bigger games and the tougher lineups, if he struggles a little bit there, if he gives up two, if he gives up three, or he has a clunker where he's giving up four or five, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to understand that, and I'm going to give him the discount. Because at nights like this, I know he's going to be able to do things like this. And that's why I was really, really happy to see Monty show up tonight and perform the way he did, especially coming off of that Toronto series, right? Uh, but we all know this was the, this was the story of the night. Uh, John Carlos Stanton, bases loaded, bottom five, and he just hits an absolute monster shot. To a left center field. Uh, tape measure shot. Look, Cole is loving it. 471 feet. 471 feet. You think he heard the boos? I know we did. I know we were all complaining. We are at each other's necks on Twitter. Um, I'm going to say one thing about this and I'll leave it at that. Right? Listen, we're going to the games for the first time in over a year. Right? These guys, have been, they played last year. It was a 60 game flunky, like weird fluky season. But we weren't there. We couldn't like really cheer our guys on. Now we're back in the stadium. We're really going to waste our time booing our guys in the first three, four games of the, of the year. Like We got to be better as Yankee fans. Let's take advantage. Let's root these guys on. Listen, they, they, they played their hearts out last year. They didn't get the result that any of us wanted. But they're back this year. They retooled. And we're expecting a better year. I'm not, I'm not saying that like if somebody's like really shitty, we can't eventually boo them. Yes. But two, three, four, five games into the year, come on, we got to relax. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if I was at the game, I wouldn't even be booing Hicks. And he was striking out. Like, he had, like, six, I think, in the first two games. Come on. Like, let's just keep it together, guys. It's really early. That's all I'm saying. Um, but, yeah, just just a beautiful, beautiful shot right here. We're going to watch it one more time. Just for now. He watches it. He stares. He knows. And once Yes gives you that shot, you know, too. Uh, this was phenomenal. The Yankees ended up winning this by the score of 7-0, to zero, I think, after Monty. We saw the likes of Sessa, who came in and did his thing. Uh, no earned runs. I think just a walk. And Chapman comes in, I think, strikes out the side. Chapman looked really good. I think the only reason he gave up that walk uh, after the first two batters he faced was because the first pitch of that at-bat, if you guys are watching, and I don't know if anyone like, is this technical that you're going to remember what I'm talking about, but the first pitch of the third at-bat that Chapman had uh, was uh, had was a strike, and the umpire called it a ball, and then I think the, the at-bat just goes awry from there and ends in a walk. I hate when that happens, but that's a conversation for another day. Yankees win 7-0. They're up uh, to 2-2 two two on the season, and hopefully we continue that and we take off into the into this next series. And I want to end with this, right? Uh, you may be wondering why I got a picture of Coors Field here. Well, Coors Field is being announced as the next site for... The MLB All-Star Game after Manfred and his cronies decided to move uh, the All-Star festivities from Atlanta. So I'm not even I'm not going to get into it. I think I think uh, Pete did a phenomenal video breaking down uh, what, you know, the nuances about this situation. 
um, are, and I do want to say I completely and wholeheartedly agree with them. Um, I think this is a shame for the city of Atlanta. I think it's a shame for the Braves organization. I mean, I think I just think it's a, not that they had anything to do with it. Don't misunderstand. I just mean like when All Star Game is at your organization's complex, it's like it's a good thing for everybody. Trust me. Um, so it's just a shame. I mean, Atlanta's a very exciting young team. You know, lots of you know hype there and whatever. Like I thought it would, would made a lot of sense. And yeah, Atlanta would have benefited a lot from this financially, economically. But uh, Manfred is, I guess, getting his news and being swayed by popular opinion on social media, which seems to be the story for a lot of people these days. And it's it's really a shame uh, that uh, decisions of this magnitude are being made that way. But be that as is may, right? Like I said, I don't want to get too um, in too much into my personal views on that. Coors Field has been announced. So hey, shout out to the Rockies. They'll be playing in your stadium. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that too many of your guys will be there, but the All Star Game will be there. And for whatever reason, as soon as this was announced, I started thinking about maybe taking the trip out there. So you never know. You might uh, get some Francis Lee All Star Game footage because I've never been to Coors Field, and I think this might be a decent opportunity to just get a look at it. Right. Anyway, you guys already know. I'm predicting yet another sweep, even though I was wrong the first time. I'm still going to predict that for this series with Baltimore. Uh, it's your boy Francis Lee. Hopefully, two games from now, we're sitting pretty at 4-2 and two going into the weekend. Tell me what you